This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. DreamWorks Animation has had an interesting history, hasn't it? It seems like whenever you look into them, they're always either on top of the world or hanging on by a thread. Despite many of their films making money, they haven't had a solo production in 15 years, always working with another major studio. Part of the odd, but also charming reason that might be is that you never really know what's going to be good or bad with them. If you told me Jack Black as a panda would be an emotional roller coaster and Will Smith as a fish would haunt my everlasting nightmares, I'd say you're as high as those who predicted Boss Baby would be the hit we didn't know we didn't want. Yes, it's hard to say why Shark Tale, Home, and Abominable took the world by storm, but Rise of the Guardians, Peabody and Sherman, and Sidbad didn't. I guess each one has its own complicated reasons. But one that was easy to see why it bombed and bombed hard was the one that was based on the toy that hadn't been popular for years. Oh, that was a hit? Of course it was. Trolls, based off the toy your sister played with when she wanted to be a voodoo priestess, was a bit of a surprise hit because the toy line hadn't been popular since the 90s. But with a colorful redesign, pop songs, and celebrity voices, you know, the secret formula for every animated film now, Trolls became a smash. Its sequel, Trolls World Tour, might even be seen as a game changer as it's the first major kids film to be released in theaters-ish, but mainly on demand. This will be especially interesting as animated sequels have not been the money makers they once were. So many are watching Trolls World Tour, or as I call it, the less funny Troll 2, with great interest. Before the fallout of that though, I thought it only made sense to see why the first Trolls movie was such a big hit for DreamWorks, and if it's worth all the kinda-ish praise it got. So let's take a look and see how this became popular again- JUST TAKE IT ON SCREEN, I CAN'T LOOK AT THEM! This is Trolls. Once upon a time, in the happiest tree, lived the happiest creatures, the trolls. Bullshit, I go online. Trolls are dangerous losers, unless I agree with them, in which case they're edgy rapscallions. They loved nothing more than to sing and dance and hug and hug and dance and hug and dance and sing and hug and dance and hug and dance and sing and hug and dance. Sorry, YouTubers who talk to kids with sped up voices, fast close ups, and little cartoons. Trolls is doing it, bed. Trolls is doing it. It's revealed there's a race of creatures called the Bergens who like eating the trolls' happiness, which thank God also means eating the trolls. Thus, they gather around the tree once a year to feast on them on the holiday called Trollstice. They light up the grills, which I have to say, I love the dark tone they're starting out on. Don't worry, it won't last. Kind of. We'll get to it when we get to it. As Prince Gristle is given his first troll to eat. <laughs> that one's rotten! It's fake? <laughs> and look like Baby Yoda if he was one of those kidney stones from Frozen. The trolls escape underground, which is not exactly a shock. It's kind of like a pine tree selling his plot before Christmas. There's fair warning, as King Peppy saves every last one of them. No troll left behind! Peppy, where's Princess Poppy? Follow-up question, am I traumatized by that? Princess Poppy is safe as well, but the Bergens are outraged and throw out the chef named... Let me guess, just Chef. I gotta stop IND being these, it just depresses me. What's gonna make me happy now? You will never, ever, ever, ever be happy. Oh, the current state of every Star Wars fan. Right here! This is where we will rebuild our civilization. After the sweet mass genocide of Smurfs living here, I say we call this home. 20 years later, Princess Poppy, voiced by Anna Kendrick, tells the story of their history to their hairy gumdrops. And that's why we hug every hour. I wish it was every half hour. So do I, but that wouldn't leave much time for singing and dancing, now would it? This is a cult. So they sing about how they're going to have a big celebration of their freedom. I guess I shouldn't judge other cultures, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be a troll racist by the end of this. Stick to the get ready to 
Well, that thing's dead fun! Something's missing. All humor in this is gonna be butt-based, isn't it? I guess my ass does do that when I put Easter egg glitter on Taco Bell. Honestly, I'd be more concerned if that didn't happen. The song is a little annoying, but I guess still upbeat. As a troll named Branch, voiced by Justin Timberlake, is concerned, as he's always paranoid, the Bergens are coming. The Bergens are coming! Ah! The Bergens are coming! Ah! The Bergens are coming! Ah! Well, I know what should have been the poster! Russell Brand troll tries to calm everybody down, and while I'm sure his character has a different name, he's basically what Russell Brand is now. Right down to, I'm pretty sure he's a troll. Tune out his negative vibrations, Poppy. They're toxic. Some folks just don't want to be happy. What's important is I'm above you somehow, even if that means physically instead of metaphorically. I'll take it, my standards are that low. The party is thrown, but as Branch predicted, Chef hears them and hunts them down. Minimize your orders! Ah, oh, ah! No, let him go! His career will destroy himself! She leaves with several of them caught as Poppy says they should save them, but the king says they should hide. What about no troll left behind? That was a long time ago. I'm not the king I once was. As I get older, I watch less MSNBC and more Fox News. You know how it works! Poppy goes to Branch to ask for help, who it looks like has spent years preparing an underground bunker. Who's crazy now? No, really, who's crazy now? This day and age, this almost sounds rational. It's my fault they were taken. Now I don't know what to do. Why don't you try scrapbooking them to freedom? Solid burn, Branch. I think we both know that's the plot for the third movie. She invites all the trolls left to live in the bunker, which Branch says will make his 10-year rations only last a couple weeks. You won't last a day out there. And you won't last a day in here. Solid burn returned. <laughs> this is entirely your fault? She sings a song about not being afraid, and while the song I guess is alright, I will admit this got a laugh out of me. I give credit to any movie with a body count. She gets trapped by spiders, though, but is saved by Branch. Oh no. Poppy! At least she looks slightly less adorable than dead Elijah Wood webbed up. You are right on time. Oh right, like you knew I was coming. Yes, I figured after the third hug time, getting eaten by a Bergen wouldn't seem so bad. Again, in this day and age, maybe. You there. What are you doing? Well, Silence. Mailing a letter? Uh, you need stamps. You don't appear to have stamps. I... Silence. If you're going to mail a letter, you're going to need stamps. Uh... Best make that trip to the post office. Don't go outside! Going to the post office is more difficult now more than ever, isn't it? Silence. Yeah. There's a good boy. That's why you need stamps.com. Anything you can do at the post office, you can do at stamps.com. Print postage on demand and skip those lines and crowds at the post office. Plus, you can actually save money with discounts you can't even get at the post office. Among other benefits, you know what they are. Stamps.com brings all the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer and the safety and comfort of your own home, office, or anywhere else you're hunkering down right now. Look at you, you're trying to talk, don't speak. Whether you're a small business sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or just working from home and need to mail stuff, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. Simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Are you listening? Shut your face! Once your mail is ready, just leave it for your mail carrier. Or just drop it in a mailbox. No human contact required. It's that simple! Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Are you listening? Silence! Stamps.com can get you great discounts too. Five cents off every first class stamp and up to 40% off USPS shipping rates. And now, in addition to offering discounted US postal service rates, Stamps.com also offers UPS services with discounted rates up to 62%. What? Say that with me, silence, 62%. Uh... Plus with Stamps.com, you won't even have to pay UPS residential surcharges. Uh... Good boy, here's a treat. You get to look at a treat. Don't eat it, it's mine. Stamps.com is a no-brainer, especially now, saving you time and money and keeping you safe in these crazy times. And guess what? Guess what? No! Right now, our viewers get a special offer that includes a four-week free trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in nostalgia. That's stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in nostalgia for your special offer today. Stay safe and don't go outside! Stamps.com, goodbye.
Sophie and Brand get this, bicker and argue because they're totally not gonna be together by the end. That's why every Meg Ryan movie ends with a killing spree. You don't sing, you don't dance. So gray all the time. What happened to you? Shh. My tragic backstory attempting to make you cry will have to wait. There's no Bergen, is there? You just said that so I'd stop talking. Pick one. They try and get some sleep, but Poppy can't help but sing herself a lullaby while Branch enjoys the quiet. <laughs> I'm sure this is the scenario Simon and Garfunkel had in mind when they wrote this. And given how it's done, I do fittingly have the look of Hoffman and Ross at the end of Graduate. This is what we call a relatable character. They come across two tunnels. One leads to certain death, and the other leads to the Bergens. A cloud, though, apparently says he knows the answer. Oh, this is just gonna be like that riddle you've heard in other movies except dumb. First, you have to give me a high five. Then I'll tell you. Whoop! Shark attack! Nom 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 nom! Oh. Jellyfish! Hand sandwich! Turkey! Snowman! Dolphin! Helicopter! Last supper! Please kill him. Ah! That's right! You better run, Cloud! Again, relatable character. The Cloud leads them the right way, and they end up in Bergen Town, where they sing gorilla songs. I am a Happy kids are hearing a good song, pissed they're not seeing the darker version with motherfucker in it. I think I'd rather corrupt a child than patronize him. This would be like singing Smells Like Teen Spirit and Peter Pan. Why do I keep forgetting that's a thing? The chef approaches Prince Gristle, who is now king, and tells him all about the trolls that can make him instantly happy. The only way I'll ever be happy is by eating a troll, and that ain't gonna happen thanks to you. Again, if this was a gorilla's video, it'd be something else that could do that. The king tells the chef to bring back Trollstis, meaning she will have power once more. Meanwhile, Branch and Poppy sneak into Hotel Transylvania, but it looks like it's too late as Russell Brand Troll is being eaten. The film gives the appropriate response. We didn't see him swallow! Face it, Poppy. Sometimes people go into other people's mouths and they don't come out. The guy who did dick in a box, everybody. Poppy goes after her friends and discovers the scullery maid named Bridget, voiced by Zoe Deschanel, is not allowed to Trollstis. Thus, she sings about her love for the king. It sounds nice, but the imagery is still uncomfortable, like most of the songs. I can see it in your eyes. You know, one night I combined crystal meth with Vicodin, and that is exactly what I saw. Guys! Poppy! They get their friends out, but Bridget spots them. Poppy says she can help her meet the king, though, and get Russell Brand troll back. But Bridget doesn't believe them because Branch won't sing. And if you think that doesn't make any sense, wrap your brain around this. You have to sing. You have to. No. Yes. No. Why won't you sing? Because singing killed my grandma, okay? I don't think any of us expected him to say that. Yeah, okay, I'll bite. How is that sentence breathed into existence? It looks like Branch was singing so loud he didn't notice the Bergen behind him and his grandma sacrificed herself to save him. You do know this is a movie where they fart sparkles, right? Wow, you guys really know how to let emotion sink in. Like a bowling ball in a concrete. That was terrible. I just assumed you had a terrible voice. No, no, it was like an angel's. I was humble as fuck, too. So after that totally out of nowhere death scene, yeah, again, sprinkle butts, they dress up Bridget so that no one will recognize her and she can get close to the king. Aw, oh, they went to Little Caesars. Oh, no, sorry, nobody acts that passionate towards Little Caesars. True happiness is a lot closer than you think. He reveals the troll he had earlier is still alive. Okay, that's strike two. You had a chance to kill Russell Brand and you didn't. But she leaves when she sees Chef comes in. You and the king can make each other happy. Impossible! Only eating a troll can make you happy. I know, I've been prescribed two Norm McDonald's a day for my depression. The trolls are captured again by Chef, who reveals she has a secret weapon to catch the rest of them. He's selling us out! Brand, at least give him a chance! Thank you, Poppy. I'm selling you out. Did they even have to write lines for him? I'm pretty sure Russell Brand just showed up and they were like, just say what you normally would in this situation. I'm selling you out. He reveals that in exchange for his life, he would show where the rest of the trolls are. And he does exactly that, luring the trolls into the open. The trolls! We have enough cereal mascots for five Lucky Charm spinoffs. The next one will have donuts! Poppy feels like she failed, which... I mean, that party set this all in motion, so yeah. Which causes all the trolls to go gray because... 
I guess the film's deep now. Yeah, I liked it more when you were at Disney Channel sing along with butt confetti. I never thought I'd say that, but at least you weren't kidding yourselves what you were. You with the sad eyes. Of course, Branch starts singing to lift Poppy's feelings, bringing the color back to all the trolls, and even confesses his love to her. That's why I love you. Not since Ray and Kylo Ren has a romance dared to take seconds to explore. Yeah, they had all the bickering, but they forgot to put in the part where they're romantically involved. Unless, was the dead grandma scene supposed to be that part? Did anyone find that particularly romantic? Dead grandmas are hot, thanks trolls. Puppy, Bridget? Bridget breaks them out, but the trolls can't let her be blamed for their escape. So they return to reveal she was the girl the king fell in love with. <gasps> Lady Glitter Sparkles. You're not a natural rainbow? When you were with Bridget, you were feeling something, weren't you? I just thought it was too much pizza. Me too. That was happiness. It's true, having too much pizza is happiness. I live in Chicago, so I know. King Grizzle admits he's happy with Bridget and without eating a troll, and I forget, is this a musical? Sunshine in my pocket, got that good soul in my feet. So the song is a lot like the others, upbeat, colorful, not especially interesting. What is that thing?! I'm sorry, I've been quiet the whole film, but there's no others like him, and they just call him a troll. Like, there's a bunch of him, but there's not. It's only him, and he's scary. He's so fucking scary. That's not a troll, that's the nightmare from Shrek 3. If I saw that thing, I would stab it with knives. So they figure out happiness is within and doesn't have to be consumed. Um, don't do drugs, I guess. Ironic, because all of this would look amazing if you did. Our new queen. She taught us we don't need to see therapists or take medicine, just bounce. Yes, this song, as well as this ending, may seem very sappy and lame, but there is at least a happy ending for the adults. Russell Brand dies. Any film that goes out with that is doing something right. So that was Trolls. Um, it's a kid's movie. Honestly, though, I think that kinda is the best way to describe it. I think it's intended for little, little kids. The jokes, the colors, the songs, the overall bounciness. Nothing screams we're trying to entertain teens and adults as well. And as kids' movies go, it's mostly okay. The visuals are imaginative, the songs have a decent variety from different times, and the jokes, while well, not funny to most adults, aren't painful to get through like, say, the Chipmunks or Smurfs movies. The only area where it suffers is the third act, suddenly throwing in family deaths and depressing imagery and a story that's clearly not talented enough to support it. You're a little kid's film with butt jokes. You're not great at it, but you're passable enough. Stick to that and children may put you on a few more times before growing up and asking, what was in those pixie sticks? I can't act like I enjoyed it before its target audience of, say, 3 to 10. I think it's imaginative and colorful enough. Not a glowing review, but the kindest I can give to a movie with farting glitter. Anyway, it's pointless to act like they're the new trademark of glitter as we still have our powerful movement. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle! Fuck yeah, sparkle, sparkle, sparkle! Honey, why did you just say that? Sing and kill my grandma, okay? Hey, Doug Walker here. Uh, at the time that I'm recording this, uh, the coronavirus is still a massive thing. Lots of people are quarantined, uh, you know, and stay at home. So uh, we're once again doing a charity that ties into combating uh, the coronavirus or just helping people who need so much right now. So we are doing uh, one that we've done before. It's called Direct Relief. Uh, it has a four-star rating on Charity Navigator. And specifically for the coronavirus, uh, they are coordinating with public health authorities, nonprofit private organizations and businesses in the U.S. and globally to provide personal protective equipment and essential medical items to health care uh, to health workers responding to the virus in the U.S. Direct Relief is delivering protective masks along with exam gloves, isolation gowns, and other protective gear to healthcare organizations across the country. As I'm sure you've heard watching the news, uh, there's just 
such a lacking for that. Uh, so this is an organization that's specializing in getting people what they need, uh, not just people infected, but you know people treating those who are infected. So we've done this charity before. It's really wonderful. Uh, definitely check it out. See what you can give. Uh, you know it, it's a tough time for everybody, uh, but uh, please see whatever you have. Even the tiniest bit can go a long way. So thank you so much.